In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can find velocity from a displacement time graph. And we've got four different graphs there because we're going to look at four different cases and find how we can work out the velocity in every case. So here's our four graphs. So our first graph here, our displacement, which means our distance from a specific point is four meters at time equals zero. At one second, it's four meters. At two seconds, it's four meters. At three seconds, it's four meters. So in other words, this object simply isn't moving. So we can instantly tell that the velocity in this case is zero. So if you ever see a flat line on a displacement time graph, you should immediately know that the velocity is zero. Our second case is we have a straight line. And in this case, we have a constant velocity. The velocity is not changing. So from here to here, we are increasing by the same amount as from one to two seconds. So velocity is never changing, and so we can find simply the gradient of this line, and that will give us the velocity. And in fact, we could take any two points on this line and find the gradient, and it would give us the same answer, because the velocity is constant, meaning that it doesn't change. The next one is the case where we have a negative velocity. So we've got our displacement at 4, decreasing to 2, decreasing to 0, which brings us to our kind of starting point. And then it's moving in the opposite direction away from the start point to have a negative displacement. And in this case, you're going to do the gradient, but you're going to find a negative gradient. So when it's sloping down the way, it's a negative gradient. And when it's sloping up the way, it's going to give you a positive gradient. Our last case is the hardest one to deal with, which is where we have a variable velocity. So the velocity at one second and the velocity at two seconds is going to be different. So in this case, we've got an acceleration. So we can find out the velocity at time equals two or find the velocity at time equals three, but there isn't going to be one number that describes the velocity everywhere. And the way that you can find the velocity at a specific point in this graph is to find the gradient of a tangent at that point. So you can note at specific points, but not everywhere. So let's run through these various cases. So this is our case with constant velocity. So we've got a nice straight line here. We could actually look at any two points but it's easiest to look at zero and then another point because it saves us doing very difficult subtractions. And so what we can do is recall that velocity is the change in displacement. I use S for displacement. We can't use D because D is for distance. So we're going to use S for displacement divided by delta T, which is our change in time. This triangle simply means change. It's the Greek letter delta. And in physics, we use that to mean change. So we need to find our time. So I'm going to take from here to here, and that's going to give us a change of time of five seconds. Zero to five is five seconds. And then when we look at five seconds, how much has our displacement changed by? So we look up to here on the graph, read that off, and that will give us a change in displacement of 17.5 meters. So we've got our delta S to go into here, and we've got our value for delta T that will go into here. So we just do that substitution to get 17.5 over five, Type that into the calculator and you get a velocity of 3.5 meters per second. So when you want to find constant velocity, you simply take two measurements and then divide them to find the gradient, and that gives you your answer. Let's look at a case where we have a constant velocity, but we have a negative gradient. So this is our sloping downwards. And it's a very similar procedure. You're going to use the same formula. You're going to take a measurement, and it could be from anywhere. This is the most convenient, I find. So we're doing 0 to 2, and that's going to be a delta T of 2 seconds. Then we can look from 0 to 4, but we're actually going 4 down to 0. So we're thinking down the way, and that's a displacement of minus 4. It went backwards by 4. So we've got minus 4. You have to be careful with that minus, otherwise you'll get it wrong. So going backwards, we do minus. Let's substitute those two numbers in. Our delta S of minus 4 goes on the top, our delta T on the bottom. And that gives us a velocity of minus 2 meters per second. And remember that displacement and velocity is a vector, so that's why we can have our minus there. Whenever you have a negative slope, you should be expecting a negative answer. If you don't get a negative answer with a negative slope, you've done something wrong. So let's look at our hardest case, which is how do we deal with variable velocity? We've got this graph here. We can't find one simple velocity because this system is accelerating. The velocity is different depending on what the time is. So let's just look at one point. We're going to look at the velocity at time equals 2. And so we draw a tangent to that point. A tangent is a line that touches 
at one point and one point only. So we're going to have this touch at t equals 2 and nowhere else. Our formula is that the velocity at time t, so some specific time that we've chosen, in this case 2 seconds, is equal to the gradient of this tangent. And a gradient formula is simply your change in y divided by your change in x. So we're going to have two points on the line. So we can pick two points. So this point, by definition, is on the line because we chose t equals 2. The next point could be any point along this line. So I'm going to look for a point that's convenient, and I quite like this one here. So this is 4, 6, and it must be on the tangent. Don't use the line. Use the tangent. So we've got our x1 here, our y1 here, our x2 here, and our y2 here. So we simply replace our x2s and y2s, etc., in this formula. So just do the substitution like I've described, and we get this expression here. Simplify that down a little bit. So you're getting 4 over 2. And then when you put that into your calculator or do that with mental maths, which is nice and easy, you would find that the velocity at time equals 2 is 2 meters per second. If you were to do this calculation at four, you would find an answer that's much larger because the gradient is larger. The velocity is changing because of the acceleration and it's steeper here, so you're gonna get a greater velocity. I hope this video was helpful to you and you can now calculate velocity from a displacement time graph. And finally, thank you very much for watching.